Welcome to Inside Games, the only gaming news show brave enough to cover Gamergate 2. It's back, and yeah, there's nothing braver than just a couple of white dudes talking about <laughs> diversity issues in gaming, huh? And me! Ah, uh, yes, of course. Charlotte as well, please. Diversity hire at Inside uh, Games. <laughs> Got our diversity shields in place. After almost 10 years, <laughs> the internet's more uh, terminally online sort have declared Gamergate 2 is on after a fresh, alleged controversy about wokeness in video games. <gasps> wokeness in my games, Bruce? <laughs> We're gonna try our best to cover the events as neutrally as possible, <laughs> even after Lawrence's reaction. Uh, that will be a challenge sometimes, obviously, be because like Gamergate, there's a concentrated effort to craft a particular narrative. What a, what a novel idea on the internet. Uh, the other part is that it's just really stupid. <laughs> it's a weird hill to die on, for sure. Yeah, the air quotes controversy centers around a company called Sweet Baby Incorporated, which is a Montreal-based narrative design company that consults with game developers on their game's story and dialogue. On its page, Sweet Baby says that it's, quote, building a team and a process in hopes of building a kinder, more sustainable industry at every scale. Some of the games they've worked on include Alan Wake 2, God of War Ragnarok, Spider-Man 2, Suicide Squad Kills the Justice League, and the indie hit Sable. Sounds all pretty standard, right? All right, we're gonna answer that for you. Yes, yes, it is standard. A lot of consultancy companies going around, they take a day rate to just share their ideas and opinions on things. Yeah. Gives companies diversity of thought, typically a good thing, but not so fast. Watch out. Controversy around this particular group kicked off last month when one of Sweet Baby's consultants discovered a Steam group called Sweet Baby Inc. Detected. Mm, the group says it's devoted to discovering games that Sweet Baby has been affiliated with. Not a hard job considering Sweet Baby lists those games on its website. But unlike the Steam group that rates fishing mini games, one of my favorites, <laughs> The connotation that Sweet Baby Incorporated detected draws, not necessarily a positive one in this case. We will cover the whole thing after a quick word from our sponsor, HelloFresh. Today's episode of Inside Games is brought to you by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Whether you're trying to save money, eat healthier, or just stress less in general, HelloFresh is here to help you do all three. Join HelloFresh today and say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll like delivered right to your door. No more staring blankly at your fridge for hours wondering what to make for dinner. It's right there. So give HelloFresh a try and choose from 30 plus calorie smart or protein smart recipes each week. They're all packed with fresh ingredients. Everything arrives pre-proportioned and right at your doorstep for less hassle and more. Mm. It gets better too. There's nothing better than a decadent sweet treat at the end of a delicious meal and HelloFresh happens to agree. In fact, they're giving all new subscribers free dessert for life. That means you'll enjoy a totally free dessert item with every single HelloFresh delivery. It's like getting that, you know, uh, that little level up or that special little bonus at the end of your mission. For all this and free dessert for life, go to the link in the description and use our code INSIDE16FM to receive 16 free meals and a free dessert item for life while your subscription is active. Thank you very much, HelloFresh. Thank you very much, HelloFresh. All right, let's take it back to the story at hand and cover the full thing. We got a Steam curator group called Sweet Baby Incorporated Detected that's singling out games that have collaborated with the narrative consulting firm Sweet Baby Incorporated. To learn more about this, we had to reach out to the staff member that loves Steam so much her computer is powered by it. Charlotte! Do I didn't know you were steampunk. Do do <laughs> What's the story behind this uh, curator group? Yeah, I'd love to tell you. I gotta make sure I got enough coal in the boiler. Yeah, this bad boy will get us to Tallahassee. Okay, what's going on, Bruce? Oh, well, you know, Sweet Baby Inc. detected the Steam Group, that thing. Oh, I love Sweet Baby Rays. The person who started the Steam Group, a Brazilian gamer who goes by Cabrutus, has since gone on to make a website to, in their words, catalog all diversity, equity, and inclusion companies, DEI. Ooh, big bad DEI, as well as games they have involvement in. Judging by their Twitter feed, uh, Cabrutus clearly feels that Sweet Baby is dedicated to doing nefarious things like making women bigger in games and no not like as a presence like bigger larger <laughs> or, or less attractive 
I mean, yeah, it's the same old Gamergate argument that woke groups are taking away our God-given right to look at massive video game jugs. The discovery and larger coverage of uh, that Steam group has led to outcries once again of wokeness ruining video games. Oh, so far it is business as usual on the internet every single day. But tensions boiled over when SBI narrative designer Chris Kindred posted screenshots of discussions from the SBI detected Steam group that they allege violated Steam's code of conduct. Kindred then asked their followers to, quote, report the fuck out of this group and report the creator since he loves his account so much. The angry gamer side didn't react super well to this antagonism all too well. Uh, it didn't help that some of the SBI staffers had public posts seemingly confirming a massive liberal woke conspiracy like, pay me to shoot down your white male lead game ideas. Back and forth antagonism rose. Right-wing author James Lindsay announced that, quote, Gamergate 2 is underway, and quoted former Blizzard developer Mark Kern, who claims that big-budget games now partner with DEI consulting companies like Sweet Baby to secure funding. That prompted a response from none other than the world's most correct man, <laughs> Elon Musk, who wrote, wow above Lindsay's Gamergate 2.0 post. Oh, this fucking brain genius. He's too smart. We can't have him trapped in it at x.com. Can't keep up Can't keep up with him. Let him make more trucks. Uh, the controversy was picked up by another right-wing influencer, Matt Walsh, mm, who also bemoaned the sad, woke state of gaming. Um, Walsh's comments were also boosted by Musk, who tweeted, video games need to get rid of the woke BS. Getting lectured with tedious propaganda is not why people play games. Oh my god. Get good. Get good. You fucking <laughs> losers. Sorry, I can't stay neutral about this one. This is Jesus Wait, Christ. Hold on. How, how many copies did The Last of Us sell again? I, just, I think it's like 37 million or something. It's a lot, right? Yeah, it's 37 million. I Googled it. As soon as I saw that post, I Googled that. Like, I opened a new tab Last of Us sales. Oh. So, tedious propaganda cells, anyway. Uh, so the back and forth has kicked off a Streisand effect, where calling for the Steam Group's cancellation has brought more visibility to it than it would have ever had otherwise. The Sweet Baby Detected Steam Group now has more than 110,000 followers and a Discord with about 2,000 members. Probably really fun in there. Really good vibes, I'm assuming. Yeah, a lot. They probably have a lot to talk about. You know, it's not all just one subject over and over and over again, I'm sure. No, they probably have a channel for books. They probably talk about, you know, Anime. Post photos from your local farmer's market. Mm -hmm. Big squash today. Well, despite uh, Cabrutus's request to not harass anyone, the mere mention of Gamergate, of course, summons up a lot of bad memories and lots of people who experienced a lot of harassment and death threats back in the day. Right, of course, because that's what you normally do uh, when you're mad about something about video games. You threaten death on people. Uh, it's obviously happening again because you're idiots. Uh, Kotaku reported that Sweet Baby's employees have now faced rampant harassment. The company locked its Twitter account, presumably because of trolls and harassers. It's also just nice to lock your Twitter account. I don't know. <laughs> just turning it off for any reason always improves my quality of life. Anyway, a lot of the old subreddits have uh, fired on up again. Um, a lot of these subreddits were kind of central to the first iteration of Gamergate. And now suddenly they're they're spinning back up with life, heeding the clarion call to fight wokeness in video games. Uh, well, what does Sweet Baby actually do here? I, uh, surprise, it is actually not what the Neo Gamer Gators think. Mm -hmm. They round up white men and execute them. <laughs> After interviewing employees, Kotaku said that Sweet Baby's work is focused on writing stories and dialogue and that they're not a DEI consultancy firm meaning that their job is to make sure plot points and dialogue make logical sense and flow, similar to what Script Doctor would do in Hollywood. In Suicide Squad, Sweet Baby worked on the game long after the story was written, and their contributions consisted of writing in-game ads, audio logs, and some NPC barks. But they were probably woke barks, I bet. Well, uh, CEO Kim Belair told Kotaku that the perspective is never that we're coming in and injecting diversity. For the most part, it's the reverse. It's that a company has created a character and they want to make that character more representative and more interesting. And also more woke. That hasn't stopped uh, some conspiracy theories, of course. Like one that Sweet Baby was the reason the Alan Wake 2 protagonist Saga Anderson was black. A rumor that was dispelled by the game director himself. Yeah, there's, there's a fun trend here where when people who make games tell the loudest group that they are not correct, that group is then like, no, you're lying. So, I don't know. They're the ones making it. We have to believe them, right? But if there is a silver lining here, and there rarely is, but it's that a lot of the victims this time around at least have the resources and benefit of those who have been through it before. 
Uh, a lot of people are sharing resources on how to combat hate online. Yeah, the gaming mental health nonprofit Take This has responded to the controversy, encouraging everyone inside and outside the industry to speak out against it. They wrote that a major lesson learned from Gamergate was the importance of taking a loud public stance. Interesting, because that's exactly what I do. Uh, and some people are just making fun of the latest controversy, like the Gaming Circle Jerk subreddit, <laughs> which has mocked the issue with memes of actual sweet babies. It's a very sweet baby in there and a lot of very sweet replies. Aww. Aww. And if, hey, uh, as, as, a, as a large video game breast enjoyer, I can, <laughs> I can share some of the deep-seated concern that all this wokeness has affected our ability to ogle pixelated boobs. But if we're being honest with ourselves, folks, come on now. Tifa and Aerith are both in rebirth. They both have very skimpy outfits and Tifa is a brick house. God bless. Yes. I'll, I'll rant more about this in a second, but uh, it's going to be okay. Yeah, Lawrence, you've forgotten about the ladies in Stellar Blade. I just saw a screenshot from Stellar Blade. She wasn't wearing anything. She was wearing basically nothing. No, it's probably like a cyber suit or something, like some kind of latex nano suit that perfectly conforms to every curve. Hey, guys, 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 let's not forget the hunks. Okay, like who? I want, I want hunks. Give them to me. Squirtle. Hmm. And um, uh, Dominic from Gears of War. Oh, of course. The biggest hunk, the biggest hunk. Street Fighter VI is just like the hottest game. I can't get over it. Tekken has some some really gorgeous people. Uh, Charlotte, you want, you want to talk about, you want to, you have anything to add to this? Do I want to talk about wokeness? <laughs> yeah, I do, I do. Okay, so yeah, on the one hand, like guys, don't worry. Wokeness and horniness, not mutually exclusive. You know, if you're out there and you're like, they're taking away things that I can play that make me feel funny in places. It's like, listen, you want, you want more diversity. Bring in some other voices from outside. You know, like sexiness has moved past. Like, it's not like it's all Baywatch. Come on, we got other cultures. We got other identities. Let them in. Uh, but the actual serious take is that there are times in history where this would have felt less malicious, like it had less teeth. Um, and it, now in a time where not just the divisiveness, but also coming specifically from where I come from with, in terms of like Gamergate and wokeness is like there are many that would say my existing is wokeness. And um, it's one thing for like a fringe Steam group because even 100,000 is not that many people in the grand scheme of things. But like we exist in a time where there's constant legislation leveled against, you know, queer and trans people. Um, and that's not even to mention the vast inequalities and injustices uh, against, you know, black and brown people. So like, it just feels really shitty to see it. Like it's, it's always bad. It's never good. But uh, I think given the context, it's like that much more malicious. But I think it, it, the, the speaking out against it is the right call. Like the Streisand effect obviously is like, it's an it's an unwanted but uh, kind of unavoidable side effect of take talking about these things. But like you said, you know, back in like what was it like 2014 when Gamergate was really like popping off, like a lot of people thought like, well, just don't don't pay any attention to the trolls. And like th the trolls are not house plants; they will thrive without light and water. So like you know, uh, I've had a complicated you know feelings towards whether to call people out, and often like. It does help because it shows the less vocal, you know, majority that you are paying attention to these things. And so like, yes, you know, don't feed the trolls, but that's not really a long-term solution. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree completely. It's, I, I mean, I, I'm trying to think of how to phrase this. What's, what's annoying is that all these movements start from an iota that is, that is through the right lens and pitched in the right way, somewhat reasonable, right? That's how you buy into people's buy into people's heads and then manipulate all of their uh, prejudices and stuff into a movement. So, I mean, in, in 2013, I thought most written games journalism was getting pretty pretentious and annoying, but that didn't mean that I, you know, wanted to harass anybody. I just did my own thing. Baffling. So I can, I can almost understand uh, dudes who were at the center of all culture feeling like the, the spotlight's moving away from them. Um, or that they're being less targeted by by entertainment media, but they're still being targeted, you know? And and I think, so if in the past, in the 90s or whatever, when the golden era, air quotes golden era was for a lot of people that, that uh, don't like where things are headed, maybe you got one horny game a year. Maybe your entire adolescence was defined by the one horny game you could, you could get. But every month, every week, and Bruce can attest to this, 
There's horny shit everywhere. Everywhere, all over. Every shape and every size. So if, now if you're using it as a smoke screen to harass people, you know, fuck off, but you already haven't listened this far into the episode. But if you're, if like, spend a half the time you spend attacking the things you don't like to research and find things that you do like, because that helps them too. And then you can just be in your weird little cubby, jerking your dick until it falls off. And you'll like, it's just about that. So if you want conflict in your life, you can find it. But also the world is vast and beautiful and diversity can help you in this way. And that there's still a lot of wank bait out there if you want to go get it. Uh, You're just like most people, you're not allowed to say that what you want is what everybody should have. I don't have much to add to this because Charlotte and Lawrence are so correct. Uh, I will say the biggest game of last year, Baldur's Gate, is maybe the horniest game I've ever seen. And the most diversity and the most horniness. And I'm all for it. I want to see dicks and butts and bush. And I want to see it all. Give it to me. Uh, bears, I don't care. Cyberpunk? Cyber, oh my gosh. One of the biggest games <laughs> of the last few decades. And it's one of the horniest things yep, out there. That's right. I got the those mod where you can sleep with Adam Smasher. <laughs> It's awesome. That is so cool. I feel like that's like that's like being next to a whale. Like Adam Smasher might do something that kills you, and he would barely even know you were there. Right, but the line between pleasure and pain, uh, pleasure and pain, as the Cenobites have taught us, is much thinner than people realize. <laughs> also, also, if I see any personal insults in those comments, if I see anything like uh, when I just call p- uh, idiots the people that make death threats, if I see anything that rebuts that, you're gone. Banned. This is a ban bait episode. So you're you're getting shadow banned. And by the way, I'm coming for you in the comments. I am because I'm tired of this. And then this is it's funny. It's interesting that the they said that what did they say? Like that the the best response to this was a loud, open stance. That I changed my my uh, approach on this a few years ago. I'm tired of the misinformation. I'm tired of the lies. And I'm absolutely absolutely going to correct you on things that I can correct you on. Opinions are different, but facts are not. So. I'm happy to happy to come in there and, and duke it out with you, let me tell you. Which I'm super grateful for to you guys being so like vocal and you know supporting communities that are, you know, at the receiving end of all this stuff and we've seen in the world as of late. What happens when people aren't paying attention? Yes, you hear less bad things in day-to-day life if you are pushing it all out, but the fact of the matter is that some of the most heinous things are done when the majority of people who can make a difference are just not looking that way. That is absolutely correct. Uh, I want to say thanks again to our patrons for supporting us in these episodes uh, as they have been doing a very, very long time. And we always describe a uh, a fake, uh, I guess, value to these patrons. And these patrons think Gamergate 2 is stupid. Uh, Saad, Ryan Derryberry, Sherwin Sanchez, Alex Stone, and John Warren Gillard. Those are some fine patrons, Bruce. I got another group here that thinks Gamergate 2 is really, really stupid. Talia Monochrome, Mark Fletcher, Jonathan Lenowski, Xander, and Nick Calderon. I don't know. If, I don't really need to clap, I guess.